Haunted Backyard RC. So part two in this series is actually a continuation from day one. Later on that night, she said, Dad, I really want to go work on the car some more. Man, did I think that was awesome. So we got busy. The next step was to install the slipper pads and gear onto the top shaft. This is actually a welcome upgrade for me, as the original non-slipper design was both hard to drive on a loose condition and pretty hard on the internal gears on a high grip situation. I like how they designed it here, mimicking a modern RC car. The external spring and nut is easy to inspect and even easier to make on-the-fly adjustments at the track. Way to go, Kyosho. Man, do I dislike doing turnbuckles. But I didn't want to make my problems hers, so I put a smile on my face and we carried on. On to the rear shock tower. I was getting some complaints that her hands hurt a bit from using the Allen drivers, but I think she just wanted to use the power tools. That's cool with me. We had some fun with it. All right, time to get that rear suspension mounted and the gearbox hung on the chassis. Now we're really making some progress. Knuckles went together smooth, bearings fit in perfect, quality part.
adjusted the rear suspension and gearbox hung on the chassis, we went over how the turnbuckle adjustments work on the car, which was way easier to show her on a functioning model over diagrams in a manual or pictures on the box. So that was it for today. It was dinner time and mom said we had a clean up. I think we had pizza. It was good. I'm going to try to fit this whole build into three separate videos. So we're going to show the first half of day two next. Stand by. The next day started off with building the steering rack. Not necessarily super fun, but definitely necessary. Kyosha gives you plastic bushings for the rack here. Just, just don't do that. I don't know why they skimped here. And sure enough, the rest of the kit's pretty high quality. Why put plastic bushings in the steering rack? Probably the worst possible spot to put bushings is in the steering rack. Okay, rant's over. Let's get back to work. Fortunately for me, I found four of the bearings I need for the main portion of the rack. I however did not have the flange bearings you need for the front half of the link. I'll have to put them in at a later time. You're going to need a total of four 5x8 by 2.5mm by bearings and a total of two 3x6x2.5mm by by flange bearings to complete this job. Do yourself a favor and go buy them now if you're thinking about building this car. More turnbuckle fun. Yay. Pay attention to the steering links here. Mine were a little bound up and took some work to get them smooth and free. On to the front shock tower. No surprises here. It's going together smooth. The front bulkhead and lower control arms went together nice and smooth, and we somehow managed to get all the pins in without zinging any eclipse across the room. The front kingpins and knuckles were a little bit of a challenge to get together, but I was super proud of her here. She kept trying to get it herself. Way to go, kid. I started to notice she's picking up the tools more and was getting a better understanding of how the parts fit together. It's only going to get better from here.
So there you go. Now with the front and rear suspension mounted, this is really starting to look like an RC car. We're both getting pretty excited to see it finished. That was all for today. We're going to move on. I thank you all for liking, watching, and subscribing. Stay tuned for part three of this video.